This is part two of the lecture covering finding the position of the center of mass for continuous distributions of matter. This lecture is specific to AP Physics C. At the end of the last lecture, I went through the one-dimensional stick problem, that is how to set up the integral and find the position of the center of mass. For AP Physics C, there are two other situations to look at. One is, once again, going to be a one-dimensional integral. However, in the second case, we'll look at what is called a two-dimensional or double integral. Okay, there are two problems. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one-dimensional problem first. Write it down in your notes as I read it here. So we're going to repeat the previous example involving the one-dimensional stick if instead in this case the mass is arranged into a circle of radius r. So imagine, for example, taking this one-dimensional stick and connecting the two ends such that you end up with a circle. So that would look, for example, say something like this. So take this cylinder like so and then connect it like this. Okay, now we're going to ignore the thickness in this direction and ignore the thickness in this direction. We're only going to consider a one-dimensional object like so forming a circle. The object has a mass m and a radius capital R and once again the density is uniform. So then therefore, before I even set up and solve the problem, pretty obviously where is the center of mass going to be? It's going to be obviously right at the geometric center of the circle. Let's go ahead and show that. When I set this up as an integral, I position the center of the circle at the origin on the diagram. If you position the center of the circle off of the origin on the diagram, the integral is much more difficult to set up and perform. We're not going to bother to do that. So let's just set up the situation like this. Okay, so there's the origin on my diagram. I then take my one-dimensional stick, arrange it as a circle, and it looks like this. So the circle has a mass m, a radius capital R, and a density mu associated with it. And then like I did in the last example, what we have to do is we have to build this integral. Like so. When you build this integral, it basically involves two things. The infinitesimal amount of mass dm and the position vector r. So let's take a look at the infinitesimal amount of mass dm, first of all, like so. So right here is my little dm. And this little dm has a length associated with it. This is an arc length on the circle. This is referred to as ds. Okay, and then the position vector r itself goes from the origin, like so, to this little dm. Right here is the little r. Okay, now how do we write the position vector? Well, first of all, let's note that its magnitude is capital R, which is just simply the radius of the circle. And now using that capital R, I can visualize the components of this vector in the following way. Right here is an x component in the i hat direction. Right here is the y component, like so, that is in the j hat direction. Now let's go ahead and define an angle here on the diagram. Let's call this theta. So then therefore I can write the position vector r as capital R cosine theta, that's the x component, so i hat, and then plus capital R sine theta, that's the y component, so j hat, like so. Okay, and then we have the dm. How do I write this in terms of something that can actually be integrated? This is where, once again, density comes into play. So density is mass over length. So then therefore the mass is equal to the density times the length, like so. But ultimately, how do you write the length ds in terms of something that can actually be integrated? Here's how we do that. Let's take a look at this portion of the diagram a little bit more carefully. Like so. So right here is my little dm, and it has a length ds associated with it. The little ds right here is some distance away from the origin. That distance is capital R. And then right here on this diagram is an, is an incredibly small angle. This is an infinitesimally small angle. Let's refer to this as d theta. Now recall for math how you write an angle in terms of radians. Recall that an angle in terms of radians is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. So then therefore the arc length is equal to the radius multiplied by the angle. This right here, by the way, is given a name. This is called the length element in polar coordinates.
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take this length element, ds, which is r d theta, and then plug it into here. This then gives me dm. So dm is equal to the density times r d theta, like so. And now I've got everything that I need. Right here is the dm, and right here is the position vector small r. Let's go ahead and plug everything into the integral. Okay, I'm gonna do some erasing here on the lower board. Like so. And now let's write the position of the center of mass in the following way. So we first of all have one over the total mass, don't forget to write that, and now integral. We have first of all r. times dm, like so. And now what is the variable that is being integrated over? It's the angle theta. So then therefore, what are the limits of integration? Well, we're going all the way around the circle on the diagram above, so then therefore we integrate from zero to two pi, like so. Okay, now how many integrals do we actually have to perform here? Two one for the i hat component and the other for the j hat component. The only thing, however, that we have to worry about in terms of the integrals themselves are the trig terms, the cosine for the i hat portion of the integral and the sine for the j hat portion of the integral. Everything else is a constant. So then therefore, because of that, let's just focus in for the i hat integral upon the following. I'm gonna integrate from zero to two pi cosine of theta d theta. So, okay, now, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. So then, therefore, what is the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. And then we integrate from 0 to 2 pi. So plug in 2 pi first, sine of 2 pi is 0. Plug in 0 second, sine of 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is equal to 0. So in other words, there is no i-hat component to the position of the center of mass. And now do the same thing in the j-hat direction. So now for the j-hat integral, we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi sine of theta d theta. Everything else is a constant. Like so. Okay, now you tell me, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So then therefore, what is the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. And then we evaluate between zero and two pi. Okay, now I'll do this one a little bit more carefully. We're gonna have here negative cosine of two pi first, and then minus negative cosine of zero. Okay, be careful with your negative signs. This right here is negative one. Negative, negative is positive, and then cosine of zero is one. This all adds up to zero. So there is no j hat component to the position of the center of mass. So then therefore, what can we say about the position vector of the center of mass? It's at the origin. Which is the geometric center of the circle. Simple as that. Okay, now for the next example, we're gonna take a look at one two-dimensional case. Let me go ahead and show it to you as a problem. Go ahead and write it down in your notes. I'll read it to you here. Now we're gonna repeat the calculation for a two-dimensional disk of radius capital R and what is called area density. That's a lowercase sigma, as you see as the character there in the problem. Okay, now the two-dimensional disk, as it's called, is the following. It's basically a circle, once again, like so. It has a total mass M and a radius capital R, but it's a two-dimensional object. So we're gonna consider the matter here in two dimensions. We're gonna ignore, however, the thickness of the disc in this direction. Technically speaking, a three-dimensional disc is a cylinder. We're just ignoring the thickness of the cylinder in this manner. We're just taking a look at the two dimensions here. Once again, it's uniform. So then therefore, before I even set up and solve the problem, pretty obviously, where is the position of the center of mass? Boom, right at the geometric center. Okay, here's then how we set this up.
Once again, we set this up such that the origin is at the geometric center of the disk. If you put the origin off the geometric center of the disk, then the integral is a mess. We're not going to do that. Okay, so now this is a two-dimensional object. Like so, which, as we'll see, means that this becomes a two-dimensional integral, what is called a double integral. Here's how we then build that integral. The first thing that we do is we take an inf look rather at an infinitesimally small amount of mass. Right here is a dm that is within the disk. And then it has a position vector. Right here is the position vector r, like so. Let's immediately go ahead and break it up into components. Here's an x component. Here's a y component. Right here is an angle theta. So in component form, small r is equal to r cosine theta i hat plus r sine theta j hat. Notice that I didn't write a capital R there for the magnitude of this vector. Because we're taking a look at this two-dimensional object, right here is this little dm. Its distance away from the center is the magnitude of little r. That's little r, like so. Okay, and now let's take a look at the dm a little bit more carefully. I'll do that in the lower diagram. Draw the following. This right here is the little dm. Okay, now it has a length associated with it, an arc length ds. It has a length associated with it in this direction. This is the radial direction. Write this as a dr. Okay, now before I go any further, is this ds or is this ds? Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't. And the reason why is because you have to remember that dm is infinitesimally small. Okay, now here's where density comes into play. This is area density. For a two-dimensional object, area density is mass over area. So let's say that this pi wedge here, if you will, has an area associated with it, dA. So density equals mass over area. So mass equals density. times area. But how do you write the area dA? Well, of course, remember that area is length times width. Think of the area as length times width. Okay, what about this length? Well, this right here, if you remember from the previous example, is describing the length element in polar coordinates. This ds, and it doesn't matter if it's this one or this one, because you have to remember that this is infinitesimally small, is some distance away here from the center. The distance that it is from the center is little r on the diagram above. And then right here is an infinitesimally small angle that is subtended, ds, or d theta, excuse me. So then therefore, d theta is ds over r, so ds is r d theta. Once again, plug that into here. So then therefore the area dA is the following. This right here is called the area element in polar coordinates. It's actually really easy to remember. It's easy to remember because you could say it fast, RD, RD, theta. So say that to yourself fast, RD, RD, theta. It's really easy to remember if you say it that quickly. That's the area element in polar coordinates. Okay, so now I take the area element dA, RD, RD, theta. That gets plugged into here. So the mass dm then becomes this. Density times area. So now I've got everything I need. Right here is the mass dm, and then on the board above, right here is the position vector r. And now we plug everything in.
And when we do, we obtain this. Okay, so first of all, one over the total mass. And now double integral of the first r. times dn, like so. Two integrals to perform. This integral sign corresponds to the variable small r. This is called the inner integral. If we're integrating over small r for the inner integral, what are the limits of integration? We'll take a look on the diagram above. We're integrating in the radial direction from the origin to ultimately out to the edge of the disk, a distance capital R away. So then therefore, for the inner integral, we're integrating from zero to capital R. And then this integral sign corresponds to d theta. This is called the outer integral. For the outer integral, we're integrating over the angle as we go all the way around the circle. That's from zero to two pi. Now, in some cases, you'll learn this in multivariable calculus, the order of integration matters. However, not so in this case here. We could either integrate, if we wanted to, the inner integral first for both i hat and j hat, or we can integrate the outer integral first for both i hat and j hat. It doesn't matter which way we do it for this particular example. So then, therefore, I'm gonna simplify things considerably for us. What I'm gonna do, is only take a look at the outer integral, which is over the angle theta, and we'll take a look at, first of all, the i hat portion of it, and then secondly, the j hat portion of it. Okay, now for the i hat portion of it, we're gonna be integrating from zero to two pi, cosine of theta, d theta. We already know, however, from the previous example, that this is equal to zero. So ultimately, this term drops out completely, and we don't even have to worry about the inner integral at all. Same thing for the j-hat integral as well. For the j-hat integral, let's just integrate from 0 to 2 pi sine of theta d theta. Like in the previous example, this is also equal to 0. So it doesn't matter if we do the inner integral in this problem anyway, because if we did, we would just get some number multiplied by 0, which is equal to 0 anyway. This is still the geometric center of, in this case, the disk. And then therefore, that's the location of the center of mass. So this is the one two-dimensional case that you need to know how to do. Find the position of the center of mass, which is obviously here at the center for this two-dimensional disk. Now, before I conclude this lecture, let me ask you this. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, right? You were taught that in basic geometry. In some cases, you may have even learned that formula back in middle school. Did they ever tell you why, however, that the area of a circle is pi r squared? No, they didn't. Here's why the area of a circle is pi r squared. Watch this. Here's my little DA within the circle. Let's say the circle has radius capital R associated with it. What is the little DA? The little DA is the area element in polar coordinates from a few minutes ago. Once again, that looks like this. just to be complete about things. There's the distance, small r, once again. 
Okay, now the area element, dA, is length times width. The length, however, is r d theta. So there it is again. The area element in polar coordinates, r d r d theta. Remember, say it quickly, r d r d theta. It's really easy to remember. And now I'll just go ahead and take this area element and plug it up into this expression to find the area of a circle. The inner integral is in the radial direction from zero to capital R. The outer integral is in terms of the angle going all the way around the circle from zero to two pi. Let's integrate the outer integral first. It's zero to two pi d theta. What is that equal to? Two pi. Now let's go ahead and do the inner integral. Integrate r dr, one half r squared. Integrate from zero to capital R. Plug the capital R in first, subtract with the zero plugged in. Simplify. That's why the area of a circle is pi r squared.